Today I want to take a look at how to display XML files with Microsoft Excel. Here we are looking at a sample XML file with a list of different books. Every book has an ID, an author, a title, a price, a published date, and then we repeat into the next book with its properties and so on and so forth. All of these are nested in the root element of catalog with a header declaring it's an XML file. If we copy this data and take it over into Notepad++, there's no colorization or IntelliSense until we save the file. Once we have saved our file, then we can see all the color coding and IntelliSense come through. So here we have our XML tags in the header and the less than question mark XML version 1.0. Honestly, I've never seen it done differently. If there is a version 2.0, 3.0, does it make any difference? Nothing I've ever noticed. Everyone seems to use the same format. As long as you have the header, then software will recognize it as a valid XML file. Uh, on the concept of valid XML files, there is a formatting and structure to it. You have a root element. You then have a repeating child element. You have a property with a value, or you have inner text between tags. So you can do inner text, you can do properties, and you can have repetitious child elements that will become rows within a table. Now, if some of this wasn't structured correctly, then you can't navigate the file, it doesn't recognize it, there's kind of a, a, a missing formatting going on. You know, maybe there's something with um, yeah, comments or other attributes, but there is software called a linter, and an XML lint can be a really helpful way to kind of quality check those things, xmllint.com. And here we come down, it says closing tag catalog is expected in place of book. It's like, hey, what's going on? I'm expecting the catalog that opened to then close with a catalog, but I'm seeing something different. And it's because the missing tag at the top, now that one's all valid, ready to go. Uh, it is interesting too that if you have ampersand symbols, those can really mess stuff up. And if you ever put those in, you want to do AMP with the semicolon. And that's an escape sequence to allow for an ampersand, and it'll go ahead and go through correctly. But just something to keep an eye on with the, the ampersand there. Um, that also goes for other tags. Like if you just start throwing less thans and greater thans in the middle of things, you want to do LT and GT so that those are escape sequences, which XML supports. But that's enough about the XML format. We are trying to get this into Microsoft Excel to make some sense out of it. This is a little bit challenging to read. You can't make any analysis, summation, charts. It's really just sort of raw text, not so much user friendly. We want to bring that into Excel where we can actually do some work with it. So we'll go ahead and kick open our Excel client. And we are going to browse out to the folder which has our file. So here we have our books.xml file that we were just viewing over in Notepad. And with the books XML file, everything's saved, looks to be correctly formatted, fantastic. We are going to drag and drop the file onto Excel. That's how we do it. You drag and drop the file. It is the easiest thing in the whole world. Grab the XML file and drop it on a blank canvas. That's all you have to do. When that goes in, you're going to get a pop-up window of how you want this to come through on the Excel display. Now the default option, it's a good option. It'll probably work and show your data. If you use the source pane, this gives you a little bit more fine tuning and controls. We're going to go with the first one. Majority of the time, that'll work great for you guys. So there it is. It formats a table. And we'll bring in our code side by side here. Line a few things up. ID, author, title, genre, price, publish date, description. That looks familiar. Have all this good stuff including ID, which is an attribute, not an inner tag, but it's still got it correctly. And then these are coming through with their longer text description, even though they have a little bit more data, they still render correctly. Pretty cool stuff. Now, you know, depending on what you have, this may be a little bit of a cleanup on the sizing. So you can always do row height, automatic, 
that's a handy thing to know about when you're doing uh, data from XML. It's a better way to format things. And if you right click on this table, there is an XML menu and a couple of different options. We'll zoom in on these for a moment. So the XML menu gives you import, export, refresh, source, map, and extension packs. Um, on this, the important part is going to be source and potentially refresh. You change your data, you want to see the latest and greatest. But if you right click on the table, go to XML and do source, you get this snazzy panel off the side. Now this should look really familiar. We have one root element, catalog. We have this blue icon with an arrow. That means repeating. That's, that's what that blue arrow is, is all about. That's what the arrow is for. And then we have all of our different values that are available. Now some of these were attributes and some of them were inner text, but Excel does a really good job of formatting all of them. Uh, when it comes to data types, you'll notice as you're navigating that a lot of them, they're going to say text up here in the top center, pairing to what the type of data is. So text, 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 text. All right, so all of these guys are text for the data type. Now when I come to price, it's going to say general. That's interesting, different. And publish date is going to actually say date. That's pretty cool. So if you sort these oldest to newest, you click the heading, you want to drill into certain months, you're getting all this rich formatting and awareness of it, a date. We never told it it was a date. We never gave it a schema. Excel is pretty smart. It actually figures that out for us. So when you're working with XML data, take your file, drag and drop it onto a blank workbook. That's all you have to do. Drag, drop, and then hit the OK button. Hope for the best. Now, if you want to resize some stuff, highlight all of it and hit the auto row height, that might make life easier. And then you come in with a right click to XML source. This lets you kind of play with it a little bit more. Um, if your XML structure had more than one level, parent, child, grandchild, you can start picking certain branches of the structure to, to bring in. If there's maybe only certain attributes that you're wanting, you can do that too. So, you know, maybe it's something like this. You want the three columns. That's all you're interested in. If it ever does this empty kind of rendering thing, like where did my data go? What's going on with this? Just hit the refresh icon. No big deal. That'll pull the latest. You can also do right click XML refresh. Same thing. These are going to be uh, synonymous. Refresh, refresh. That'll make sure to render all the latest and greatest for you. And then you can do cool stuff like highlight the whole column. Hit the F11 button to make a chart. That's pretty handy, you know? Yeah, maybe take it and move it so that it's side by side with the data. From here, it's all of your good Excel tricks. But for me, I think drag and drop on a blank canvas. Look at the source. Use the source to then see which fields you're interested in. Is it the hierarchy you want? The more complex the file, the more layers this is going to have. And then check out the data types. As you're putting your cursor down, does it know about it being a date? Does it know about it being numeric? That may help you out. You can hit some stuff like auto sum and, you know, kind of play with it and work the data because Excel's smart enough to pick up on the data types, even though over here we never expressed that that was numeric or that this was a date, Excel was smart enough to figure it out. So this is how you can easily work with XML files in Excel. Have some fun with it. Thanks for watching.